The Social Security system in the United States was passed in the depth of the Great Depression of the 1930s. It responded to a demand of the American people that the government help the average person through this horrible 10-year depression and not just save banks and corporations. How ironic then that in the worst depression since the Great Depression, the one we're in now, serious people are advocating either getting rid of or damaging the services that Social Security provides to the American people as a whole. Let me explain. The system is basically geared to provide a reasonable retirement to people over 60 years of age having done a lifetime of work and contributed to society. To provide them not only with a decent old age, which helps them directly, but just as important to do two other important social functions. Number one, by providing a retirement support to make it possible for the older folks not to be a financial burden on their children. The beneficiaries of Social Security are all those American families who would want to support their elderly but can't afford it without damaging their own situations. Not to support older folks is to put a burden on every family that has parents, and that does include most of us. The second function performed by Social Security that helps other people besides the elderly is the fact that by making it possible for people to retire and have a decent life, they do so much more often than they otherwise would. And that opens jobs for the unemployed and for young people entering the job market. So they too are benefited, as is the whole of society, from having productive workers able to have jobs because retirees have been able to retire. Everyone benefits from a social security program and always has. And there's still another benefit. As the money contributed by all of us in our wages that are withheld by the Social Security system, as that money is held by the government until we retire, the Social Security system invests that money. But few people understand that what that means is it lends the money to the United States government in order for it to do for all of us what it normally does. Roads, hospitals, school scholarships, all the rest of it. So that the Social Security system takes our money while we accumulate it before we retire and lends it to the United States government. So that when the United States government pays interest on those loans, that money becomes money available to Social Security to help the elderly. It's an extraordinarily well worked out system from which we all benefit. Therefore, what we need to do in the United States now is not make people wait till they're older all that does is put a longer burden on the older folks and close off job opportunities for unemployed and young people that would otherwise have been opened up. And we certainly don't want to cut benefits because it negates everything I just said about what the Social Security system does. What we actually need, particularly in a time of high unemployment, is that the age when you can retire should be lowered so that more people take advantage of it and more jobs open up for the young people and the people in the prime of their productive life who are now unemployed and those currently number 20 million. Let me answer the final question. Where would the money come from that would allow people to retire sooner and that would save us from cutting benefits that is a way of shooting ourselves collectively in the foot? And the answer is simple. We now do not withhold for Social Security on all incomes earned above $107,000. In other words, you're only paying into Social Security on the first $107,000 you earn. Now, for most Americans, that's not a problem. But for wealthy Americans, it means that all that they earn above $107,000 is not subject to withholding for Social Security. The highest income earners, therefore, are not contributing according to the earnings they actually get, the way everybody else is. There's no excuse for that. There's no need for that. And if all incomes were taxed at the same rate that everybody pays, 
then the wealthiest in America would make a much larger contribution, which after all is the same principle of taxing people and charging people according to their ability to pay that we now use for the income tax. If it works for the income tax, if it's appropriate, it also would be for Social Security. And my last suggestion would be equally obvious. We only subtract Social Security contributions from wage and salary incomes. Why don't we also do it for dividend incomes, capital gains incomes, and so on? Those are the incomes of the rich. They're exempted from being withheld for Social Security. There's no reason for that. Those two things alone, taxing all your income, wages and salary, no matter how high it is, and taxing your other forms of income for Social Security, would transform the Social Security system, give it all the resources it needs so we can have as a nation the benefits of taking care of the older folks properly, not making them a burden on their children, and opening up jobs for young people and unemployed. Especially in a time of crisis, that's what we ought to be doing rather than attacking a system that has worked better than most of the things our government has done over the last half century.